At its peak, American board track racing rivaled baseball as one of America's top spectator sports. Between roughly 1909 and 1915, motorcycle board track racing flourished in the United States. Successful riders became some of the country's first national sports heroes. Riders like Jim Davis, Otto Walker, and Jack DeRossier would live on as legends of the sport. By 1913, there were many circuits around the U.S., but the biggest motorcycle race was already in the works. While en route to the Federation of American Motorcyclists Convention in Denver in 1913, a club called the Short Grassers from Kansas found a new two-mile dirt track at Dodge City and carried a glowing description of it to the convention. The idea was enthusiastically received by the convention and the whole motorcycle trade began to set up the biggest motorcycle classic in American history on the Dodge City Oval. Only the 4th of July would be adequate for a 300-mile international championship and seven motorcycle manufacturers groomed their machines and rounded up the top riding stars to bid for the immense prestige of victory in the 1914 inaugural race. Racing was governed by competition regulations for three classes of riders, professional, trade rider, and amateur. Building off their success at the Isle of Man TT in 1912, Indian came to the 1914 Dodge City races with their new eight valve machines and took the victory. The Indian eight valve was a specially designed thoroughbred race engine designed for track use only. However, a smaller displaced four-valve baby brother was also created and championed in the shadows. This bike raced at Dodge City in 1915 in the amateur competition. It was sold to Alan Evans, an amateur Harley racer from Post Falls, Idaho shortly after. You can see in the picture here O.C. Levette in the Indian shirt behind this bike. Evans is on the Harley in the middle. It was sitting in the Evans family basement since the 1920s with everything left in place. You can see the scars that this bike carries as well as the custom modifications the rider made, which shows the evolution of the bike and allows us to perform some mechanical archaeology. You will notice the welded bracket on the right pedal, which would allow the rider to broad slide the corners with his left foot down, a move not commonly done until 1915. What makes this bike extra special is that it is in as-raced condition. From the taped seat to the brazed tank patches, this bike maintains its original condition. In fact, the oil is over 100 years old, and on very special occasions, you can still see it drip. The earliest races were held on dirt tracks used for horse racing. These were sufficient for the motorcycles of the early 1900s. But as the sport increased in popularity and the speeds of the motorcycles closed in on 100 miles per hour, the need for a purpose-built track became apparent. Racing during this era took place on oval tracks constructed of 2 by 4 wooden planks placed on edge called motodromes. Banking of the tracks started at 25 degrees and increased to as much as 60 degrees. Safety was of little concern to the riders, especially considering that the motorcycles were not equipped with a braking system. The standard rider's uniform consisted of a leather helmet, wool sweater, pants, gloves, and boots. Even if the rider walked away from the crash, he was likely riddled with wood splinters. In 1912, a number of factory race bikes were offered to the public. Hindi had the opinion that these smaller race bikes had commercial sales value. The four valve is a 30.5 cubic inch race bike with the big base from its eight valve brother and has a ported cylinder head for the excess exhaust gases. It also has uneven sized exhaust valves with the smaller valve opening slightly faster than the larger to relieve back pressure. The bikes were made without an exhaust pipe so the rider could have one custom made. You will notice here that the exhaust cuts through the oil reservoir. Although speeds could reach well over 90 miles per hour, there were no brakes or clutch. Riders also had to manually feed oil into the engine. The carburetors ran wide open and the bikes were geared so high they were towed to start. These specialty bikes did not have serial numbers and you can see that OCL is stamped on the case here. Three of these bikes were offered for sale on October 5th, 1921 by an Indian dealer named O.C. Levette for $300 in Kingsley, Kansas. It is understood that Levette purchased the bikes from Indian, raced them between 1912 and 1915 at various circuits throughout the Midwest, then put them up for sale. 
It was noted that this bike was named Pieces as it was used to supply parts to the other four valve race bikes Lavette had at his disposal and would then have replacement parts put on it. This can be noted by the lack of the slotted cylinder that would have been a factory piece. This 500cc four valve Indian factory racer has the original open port cylinder heads, original glass spark plug, and the wide open carburetor. The right grip is the spark advance and the kill switch is taped to the bars. It uses a Bosch Magneto and rides on 28 inch race tires. The Indian four valve factory race bike was rare then and even rarer today. There are only two known to exist, with this one being in the most original condition. There are few motorcycles in our collection that imbue such a feeling when you look upon it. It is a bike that immediately speaks to you and takes you back to the early 20th century. It shows you the grit and grime of early motorcycle racing and displays the bumps and bruises that came with the job. It has patina that can only be created through pressure, speed, blood, and sweat. There is nothing about this machine that is automatic or comfortable for the rider. It is truly man and machine. We hope you like this deep dive into the story of the 1912 Indian four valve. There are more stories like it here at the Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum. But this bike will be going to the Amelia Concours this weekend. So if you happen to be around, please stop by and say hello.